We are here at the Embassy of Israel in Copenhagen and uh, I'm Baruch Binah, the Ambassador of Israel to Copenhagen and I'm happy uh, to welcome uh, to the Embassy um, Sofik Wilson, the author of the book Wolf Ze'ev in Hebrew, which we are launching today in the Schneider Children's Hospital in Petah Tikva, Israel. And so I'm happy that you are here and I want to uh, you know, give us all the opportunity to get to know you a little better and to get to know the book mm -hmm. a little better. So please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where should I start? Should I begin at when I came to Denmark? or um, I can perhaps first say that uh, I was born in Belgium, on the, at the, in the northern side, in Flanders, um, many, many years ago. And um, I, 20 years ago I met my Danish husband and moved with him to Denmark. And I work today, I work at the University of Copenhagen where I teach uh, academic English, uh, all sorts of different courses, presentation techniques, um, academic writing, reading techniques and so on. And in my spare time, I write books. When I have time, when I can sit down and devote my time to it, then I write books. Mostly children's books, right? Only children's books. How many have you written so far? I have uh, written three so far. The first one is fairly unknown. It was an, a story about elves. It's very yeah. nice and cute, but um, it's, uh, it, it never became very famous or anything. The second one, Wolf, became a bestseller in, uh, in Belgium and Holland. Yeah, what prompted you to write uh, the, this book, The Wolf, I mean? Uh, is there any particular boy or girl that you had in mind while you were thinking and devising this uh, plot, this book? Well, um, the reason why I wrote this is actually quite um, ordinary. I was asked by my publisher in Belgium to write about a an, um, an, um, uh, problem in society. But I had the manuscript lying in my drawer because I had written it for a completely different reason. I had watched a television program uh, on the Danish national TV, which was about um, the children cancer ward at Dries Hospital, the, the hospital here in Copenhagen. and. This was back in 2009, I think, and I was, uh, I was extremely touched by that program. It's, um, they showed images that I will never forget. And um, when I had watched that program, I had very young children at the time, so it really grabbed me by the throat. I had to do something with, with all those feelings, and so I, I decided to, to write a story. I wanted to somehow help, somehow, and so my way of helping is writing stories, telling stories. And so I wrote the story, and then a couple of days later, uh, my publisher called me and said, could you write a story about a problem in society? And so I sent them this manuscript, and they said, this is brilliant, this is what we're going to use. And then the ball started rolling, and, and, and that's basically how the story came alive. And that was the original uh, <coughs> uh, version in Dutch, in Flemish, right? Yes, yes. And what brought you to the idea, what gave you the idea of translating into Danish? Well, uh, initially I had absolutely no idea what was happening in Belgium because the book was just out there in Belgium and Holland and then suddenly a year after it had been launched I got a phone call that um, I'd won a first prize. Wow! A very nice first award. I had no idea that the book was such a success in Belgium and Holland because the publisher wasn't really very communicative. But um, it turned out that I had won that first prize, so I had to go to Belgium and celebrate. It was like a mini Oscars for, um, for, for books. And, um, and then I, um, I thought it would be really nice to perhaps also translate the book into Danish and to um, publish it here in Denmark. And so that idea started to take shape, but it turned out to be very, very, very difficult. I, for years, two years and a half, I think, I knocked on doors, spoke to people, publishers, and asked whether they were willing to, um, to, to help me to launch the book here in Denmark. And uh, that turned out to be really difficult. There, were, there was actually nobody interested in, in, in publishing it and then not having a part of the financial cake. So that was really hard until I um, met the first key person, which was two years ago at a Christmas party at the university. I sat next to a colleague of mine who I did not know, Susanna, an associate professor in Danish. And um, I started talking to her about my dream to translate that little story, but very powerful story, 
into Danish. And um, she was listening, she was really, really quiet. And I said, I can't find anybody interested. Either they don't have time or they want to earn money on it. And I would like to have the profit uncut for a, a children cancer foundation. And so after a while, she started to get tears in her eyes. And I thought I had upset her, but I had not. She said, Sophie, you are not going to believe this. And this is really strange. This is, you know, one of those coincidences, which is really, really strange. She said, my son was at that cancer ward that you wrote about, exactly the one that... Dries Hospital. Yes, the one that gave me the inspiration to write about those children and that place. And she said, um, my son was there, he's 16, and um, he spent um, a considerable time there struggling for his life. And then she said, a week ago, only a week ago, I went there and uh, we wanted to, we needed to get the final results and see whether he was completely cured again. And she said, when I walked into the hospital, I said a little prayer, because if he was completely cured, then I wanted to somehow pay back. I wanted to do something. And then she said to me, and now you sit here next to me, I've never met you before, with your story and your dream of translating this book. She said, you're the answer to my prayer. Indeed. And, and when somebody <coughs> says that, chills run down your spine. And so together we translated the book and actually a large part of the book, and I actually think the conclusion as well, the, the, the conclusive part, was translated exactly where my inspiration came from because she had to spend uh, numerous afternoons with her son still afterwards at the cancer ward at the Ries Hospital, at the hospital in Copenhagen sure. here. And um, so the book actually got finished there, the translation got finished at the source of my inspiration. This is an amazing uh, story, amazing uh, aspect mm -hmm. of uh, your story. But anyway, how, how was the book received? In, and, and this is, by the way, where we got to know the book when the Belgian ambassador, yes. here, Paul De Witt, uh, actually uh, gave a kind of a launching uh, event for the book in Danish yeah. on the Belgian National Day. And this is how, uh, how we came to know about this book and um, started this project here. How, how was it received uh, in uh, Denmark? I, I, I know, of course, that he got the uh, uh, prize in uh, Belgium, but it was also uh, distributed in uh, Holland. Mm -hmm. And how was it uh, received in Holland and in Denmark so far? Well, in, in, um, in Belgium and Holland it got launched at the same time, because it's the same, language. almost the same language. Um, and then it got launched uh, a year ago in Denmark, and the book was received really well. Um, schools are starting to buy it, um, the libraries all have it, and it's slowly but surely picking up. It, it needs time. Um, what we don't have in Denmark here, which we do have in, in Belgium, which is a wonderful thing, is library clubs for children where they uh, organize uh, competitions and um, games with books that come out in a certain year and then they have to prioritize them. Like the 10 best books that came out this year, they have to then read all of them and then put them in a top 10. And I haven't really seen anything like that here in Denmark. It could be a really good idea to start organizing well, something like that. You have the tendency to begin things, so why don't you? But uh, how do you feel about the launching of the book in Israel and being translated into Hebrew? I think it's wonderful. I think it's so wonderful. and. Again, this book has made me meet so many champions, I call them, or um, um, what do you call them, Inshele, I'm looking for the word now, burning, burning souls for, for the cause, and I think that's wonderful, and your wife, Shuli, is of course one of them, she was the one who approached me immediately at the embassy, and who said, this sounds amazing. I can testify to that. Yes. <laughs> She was very enthusiastic and I, would, I'm, I feel very, very honored that uh, the book is translated into Hebrew and that it's now launched in Israel. Very honored. And uh, I have to say, it is noteworthy that you dedicate the royalties to worthy causes and we're very happy to participate in that uh, thing. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Why um, do you do that? I think that's a difficult question. 
Um, the book was initially, initially written because I wanted to get my story out. And the story is there because I'm not a researcher, so I cannot find any medicine to fight cancer. I'm not a doctor, so I can't help them. I don't have a lot of money, so I can't give loads of money away. So I try to help, perhaps, with a little story. And I think the story, even though I say so myself, I'm very proud of that particular story. I think it's, it's a, even though, again, I say so myself, I think it's a wonderful story. And it really, um, it can really support um, a child in, in, in difficulties. I think not only in, in, um, in terms of cancer, but also if, for example, they struggle with a completely different problem, like, I don't know, divorce at home or anything like that. I think all problems, um, um, can actually be tackled by this way of daydreaming, like what uh, I think you call him Adam in the, in the Hebrew version, yes. don't you? Um, like what Adam does in the book. He, um, he daydreams and he, uh, he, he imagines he's a hero. And I think something like that can help children to, to overcome problems. And that was initially the reason why I wrote the book, the story. And then I, like I said, I had no idea that it was um, a huge success, and that um, that project that I had in mind of uh, launching it in Denmark uh, for the uh, Children Cancer Foundation, the profit all going to the Children Cancer Foundation, only took shape when I knew that it had been so successful in Belgium and Holland, because otherwise I don't think I would have had that idea. And so um, I just did it, and I, I think it's it's it's. It's nice, it's, it's my little gift to the world. Well, I want to take this opportunity really to thank uh, you, Sophie, of course, for writing the story, but also uh, the Schneider Hospital here, where we're having this launching event uh, today, uh, the Karen Publishing House for facilitating this uh, dream to come true in Hebrew, of course, the family of uh, Bonnie, uh, Sofer, uh, who unfortunately succumbed to cancer uh, about a year and a half ago when his family made available the funds needed. And my older friend, Professor Alicia Bautov, uh, who is not only an excellent uh, eye doctor, but a gifted uh, painter who who made available the illustrations uh, for this uh, for this uh, lovely edition. Your next book is about uh, it's a Viking story. Mm -hmm. This is thrilling. I was in the attended the launching in your house and uh, I thought the plot was fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about your new book, The Viking? Um, well, the, this book is about a Viking boy who lives around a thousand after Christ and who um, goes on expeditions to England. We know those expeditions were not very peaceful. Um, and he is um, very different in the sense that he is um, the, the son of, half son of a god. So I mix Viking history with Viking Nordic mythology. And uh, it's again for children, uh, uh, probably between 12, 13 uh, years old. And um, well, let's see, let's, let's see what it becomes. It's a completely different story than that one there, but so was my elf story. So it's. Uh, different things that I write about, things that Thank you. touch me. Thank you. That was uh, really interesting. Any, any special message uh, to your uh, Israeli readership, Sophie? Um, well, I hope that um, um, the book will be welcomed really warmly um, in Israel. I'm sure it will be. And I hope that um, the story will make a big difference for many, many children. And of course, I hope that, the, that it will be sold a lot, so there will be an enormous profit um, and then um, um, perhaps I also hope that it will uh, maybe be translated into many other languages, you know, that this will be the beginning of a snowball effect that would be really truly wonderful and that children from all over the world can be helped with the story. Sophie Kretschmann, thank you. Thank you for coming Very here welcome. and thank you for all your work.